Good day everyone, and uh, happy Father's Day to everybody out there. I was going to make this video earlier, but I decided that, uh, I don't know, I had some thoughts going around in my head about this and how I was going to approach it, but uh, I ended up taking a nap for a couple hours and just woke up and I thought, you know, damn right, if there's one day a year that I can take a nap without feeling guilty, it should be on Father's Day. And I've always been on this of this mindset that, like a lot of you probably are, like on birthdays and holidays where it's like, oh well, it's just my birthday, it's just another day, or oh, Father's Day and Mother's Day, whatever, it's just another day. We kind of belittle holidays that celebrate us as individuals. So in other words, as a husband, on Mother's Day you may say, oh, what do you want to do for Mother's Day? And buy your wife flowers, a gift, whatever it might be, but when it comes to Father's Day, you say, oh, I don't want anything. It's just another day. In other words, it's important that we kind of recognize our efforts. And the father figure is probably one of the most important figures, if not the most important figure, to mankind. I mean, we've based many of our religions around the father, the idea of the father who is the teacher, the educator, the protector, or, you know, in many cases, uh, the, the exact opposite. But... Um, the idea is that a father should be one who uh, helps to bring his children into the world, helps to teach them the lessons they need to survive. Now, I lost my father when I was 15 years old to cancer, and that was a devastating time in my life. And I watched him decline, and he ended up by the end sleeping in the living room on a hospital bed, pretty much incoherent, unable to really speak. And from a man who had raised me and taken me hiking, gone out into the woods, he was a great poet, I still didn't really know him that well. And I probably never will because I was young. But when he passed, you know, it. I realize only now, you know, almost 30 years later, how much it affected me and how much it affected my resistance to taking other father figures or heroes as my own. But I myself am now a father. And when I was 23, I met my wife, and she had a young son who was three years old, or just turned four, I believe, at that time. And I've raised him since then with her. We've been together for 20 years now. Uh, he's now 24 years old. And <clears throat> I have two other young sons, one who is, uh, well, they're six and nine, but they're almost seven and ten. And I'll tell you, you know, time goes by fast. Sometimes I step back and I question myself, are you a good dad? You know, have you put in the most effort you can to be a father? And then I just slap myself, you know, figuratively and say, you know, there is no perfect father. You just do the best you can. So, anyway, this video isn't really about me. I just wanted to give my background and experience as to how I relate as a father. Having a father as well as being a father. And, um... My kids, my son came out, my uh, six-year-old, and gave me this this morning. He made it in school. You yeah, open it up, and it says, I love you. Happy Father's Day. Spelled the way a kindergartner chooses to spell. And then my other son came out, and he made me this one. Couldn't be outdone by the brother. <laughs> and it's got these, like, little folding parts in it. He's very creative. Happy Father's Day. Have a good day through this year. And it's today to be that day. Have a happy Father's Day. Emerson. And uh, these are the kind of things that just pull your heartstrings, you know? It's the thing. It, this is what matters in life. These things. Nothing else. <laughs> and I really mean that. In the sense that the things that pull our emotion forward, those are the things we live for. The things that... And it's not always just happiness we're seeking. You know, it's this emotional... Sometimes it's good to cry, you know, as long as it's the right kind of cry, I guess. But um, <clears throat> having a father in our lives, um, or just even having somebody to look up to, the fathers are the storytellers, at least we're supposed to be, theoretically. And uh, it's our job, and it's always been our job, to pass down the stories of history to our children so that they can pass them on. And perhaps in the last century, it's lost its appeal, lost its luster. You know, within the last few hundred years, with the 
advent and popularity of the printing press with the creation of the internet and uh, typewriters, computers, ways to print out our, our thoughts, um, we've kind of lost that word of mouth. In fact, we thought that maybe we had grown beyond needing these stories. Everybody remembers the kindergarten whisper game where you whisper a story to the neighbor and they whisper it to the next neighbor and then by the time it gets to the end of the chain it's a completely different story. Well that's the, kind of the image I think we've had of stories in general. That these stories have been passed down through generations and now all of a sudden we can cure this false history. And so what I'm getting at is that we are the keepers of the stories. The stories don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be accurate. They just have to be told. And I can I've never felt more confident about that than I do in today's world, in a time where we have all the truth at our fingertips, um, but we choose not to look at it. We choose to use confirmation bias to see what fits for us. So I guess my point being that, that we, the men, as men, as fathers, um, it's kind of like we're these, the, the keepers of the stories. And I'm not saying that women aren't. Believe me, don't get me wrong. You know, there's so much of this sexist bullshit out there and misogyny and people are afraid if you talk about being a man, um, then you somehow are against women and surely I know my subscribers know better, but <clears throat> I revere women. Women are like the, um, you know, uh, I can't even define, you know, men and women have their equal footing and equal place in this world. And there is no superior man. Without the woman, the man would never know how to mother a child. And I don't mean that a man couldn't be a mother to a child. But there are different, different, you see, I almost said roles. Uh, then you get into the role reversal and that whole game. What I'm saying is that um, a man or a woman can be a storyteller or a mother or a father. That's not the point. The point being that men do have a certain tendency to want to share these stories and historically we've sat around the fire and told these stories so maybe this is my story around the campfire except for uh, the campfire is the camera and uh, maybe the campfire is the internet and the uh, camera is somebody sitting on the other side of the fire and so I don't want to make this too long I just wanted to say thank you to all the fathers out there who make the effort and before I forget I would like to say that there are some fathers out there who put in a lot of effort and sacrifice everything for their kids and then there are also fathers who do absolutely nothing deadbeat dads who don't give a shit about their kids but there are also fathers out there who want to do everything for their kids and are kept from doing so by controlling mothers who uh, keep their keep the husband from seeing the kids and this has caused a lot of frustration, turmoil, and animosity between husbands and wives, or ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, whatever it might be. And uh, it does seem that the court system kind of favors the mother, so a lot of men build up this resistance towards females. And I don't like to see that happen, because I don't have anything against females in general, or males in general. Even the deadbeat dads. And that's really what I wanted to cover. Some dads just aren't cut out to be fathers. And sure, you make a mistake, you, you get a woman pregnant, she has a baby, you don't want to be a father or you're not ready to be, you know, that's a complicated issue, sure. But um, it's kind of my belief that most fathers want to make the effort. We want to be good parents, and not just to our own children, but to kids in general. You know, I feel like I want to be a shepherd for those who need help, if I can. Those who are younger than me, who are going through some of the same shit that I went through when I was young, who have maybe lost a parent themselves, or maybe are just new parents and still learning, oh my god, I have to sacrifice everything I wanted to do in my life for a, a short time in order to take care of this little helpless infant. And um, it's a wonderful trade-off. It really is. Because uh, what else is life about? Procreation, experience, enjoying life. I mean, we can sit there and try to define what life is. But what I define life by is what brings me the most happiness um, and not in this, not the type of happiness that's that's just fleeting, you know, like taking drugs, getting high, or going on a roller coaster. All that's fun, sure, but you want something that's going to endure. And being a parent of a child is a risk that we take. 
you could die, your child could die, sure, you know, life, we don't know what's going to happen next. But I'll just tell you this, when I was younger, 17, 18, I remember saying, I'll never have kids in this world, or at least never, not never, but I didn't want to, because I said, it's going to hell, this world's falling apart. You know, I don't want to introduce a kid into a world that's in total chaos. And then I thought, when has the world not been in chaos? Isn't that more of just a selfish thing on my end? And I thought, you know, other people are going to bring kids into this world. So we might as well bring, I might as well bring some kids into this world myself and, and see uh, if I can't kind of throw the balance off of, uh, uh, kind of like the same reason I'm on YouTube, even though it's pointless in a lot of ways. Most people don't want to hear some guy ramble about life. You know, they want the latest makeup tutorials or something, but uh, for me it's about the few you know, golden connections that I make, and um, I don't know where I'm going with that. I was going to compare it to being a father, but I'll just leave it at that. Happy Father's Day to everyone, if you're a father, or you have a father, um, and I know it's a tough time of year. I ran into somebody yesterday who was having a really hard time, and uh, he'd lost his dad like eight, ten years ago, and I didn't even think about it at the time that today was Father's Day, but we talked for a while and you know it really gave me a perspective and a gratitude even though I lost my father at least I can be a father and uh, so if you are a father or you have a father be grateful for it take care everyone talk to you next time